Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully you all are hearing me. And this is going to be Digital Literacy with Google Search. And this is a webinar Wednesday uh, for Wednesday, May the 3rd, 2017. Welcome to today's webinar. For everyone, I'm Carla Kuyper, EBR Instructional Technology Facilitator. If you have any questions about today's webinar, please contact me at kkuyper11 at ebrschools.org. And this webinar is worth one COU, so please sign in with your name or your email as um, you join the webcast for today, and that helps me to go into um, the district programs and award you the COU for attending this webcast live. This webcast is being recorded and the slides will be shared with everyone. If you check the chat box, you're going to find a hyperlink to today's presentation. So just scroll up a little bit in the chat box and I encourage you to use the chat box um, to enter any questions that you have. Please mute your microphone if you have one connected, um, especially if it gets a little noisy where you are. I'm at Lee High School, so in about two or three minutes, I'm going to mute my microphone when the announcements come on. You can also dial into today's webinar as well, and you'll find the information specific to today's webinar in the chat box. Okay, so today's resources are located at tinyurl Google Search, and I'm going to put that link into the chat box again for participants who join up with us um, over the next several minutes. So tinyurl.com, go Google search is today's resource link. And I'm going to move on and talk about the purpose of today's webinar. All right, so the purpose of today's session is to uh, describe and discuss how Google Search can fit within an overall plan to increase student digital literacy and to talk a little bit about what we mean by digital literacy to identify some basic, intermediate, and advanced search strategies and also to access some Google Search resources that will help you plan and implement your next steps for your own learning and also for your students because in a short webcast like this I can't possibly cover every tip, every trick, um, every strategy and so I encourage you not only to think about your next steps as I go through these resources and these um, ideas but I also want you to um, 
feel free to use the chat box to share any effective strategies that you found that I haven't um, mentioned during the, um, during the presentation. Okay, so today's HyperDoc, I'm going to switch over to my HyperDoc and start talking about Google Search from there. So welcome to this webinar once again. We just talked about the purpose and I'm going to talk about digital literacy a little bit. So in terms of digital literacy, what is digital literacy? And I'll do that with a Google search. And so as you can see, this Google search is pointing to um, defining digital literacy. I typed define digital literacy in as my search term or my search terms. Let me make that a little bit larger. And digital literacy is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information. And it requires a combination of cognitive and technical skills. And so we have to teach our kids both of these skill sets. In the summer of 2016, the state of Louisiana Department of Education released a document to assist teachers in understanding the skill sets and also some of the um, activities that they can use with students to help them build digital literacy. And the state gave us seven specific categories and, a, and an additional category called math applications. So computer operations, word processing, spreadsheets, Math applications makes the eighth one presentation and multimedia, acceptable use, research and information gathering, and communication and collaboration. So we're talking about this one right here, research and information gathering. It's a lengthy document that highlights the skill sets that students need to have to be college and career ready, as well as online assessment ready. So when we look at research and information gathering, it's an entire section to itself. It's one of the most lengthy sections of the document. There are 13 different skill sets that the state feels our students need to have meaningful opportunities um, in the classroom and within the curriculum to be prepared for college and career um, and to contribute to society. So you can see it's a lengthy list. I won't read through those, but I will highlight a few that I think are significant and that um, directly connect to Google search. So for example, um, the first one, using age appropriate technologies to locate, collect, and organize content, performing basic searches on databases, evaluating teacher or self-selected internet resources, Here's a big one, using effective search strategies. And you'll notice that for every one of these skills, you'll see um, exactly where it falls in terms of a progression from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And as you can see, most of these skills, um, the state would like to see students mastering these skills by the time they leave middle school and entering high school. So using effective strategies, um, using search engines, and understanding some of the differences um, among, between and among the different search engines, using in-text citations, and web browsing, just in general. And then also, um, don't want to miss the last one, and that's developing and using teacher guidelines for things like citations, um, content organization. So you want to be aware of these guidelines when planning activities for students um, and when directing them to use Google Search. The best way to get started with Google search is to start with the basics. And um, just in terms of the basics, using Google Chrome, open a page in your web browser. You can use the Omni box, which is the box at the top. You can also use the, the Google search box that's in the middle of the page. very effective. Um, most students figure out pretty quickly and one of the reasons that they love the Google Chrome browser is that they can immediately start searching um, in, the, in the address bar. Now, one of the things that students may have difficulties with is figuring out how Google manages searching. 
and they have in fact created a website just to take you through or walk you through the process of how they go from uh, their algorithm, which is how they index different websites that are out there, and how they can uh, help students find answers to questions that they have. So. It's a pretty cool site. As you scroll along, it starts out by talking about crawling and indexing. And it turns out that Google indexes about 130 trillion pages and growing. So I encourage you to use this link to take kids through this interactive presentation. That explains how they find um, and how they uh, index all of these pages in terms of content and other factors to start pulling them into a search results. They keep track of all of these websites in an index and then they write programs and formulas to give you the best results when you type in a search. I won't go through the entire page, but I will mention that one of the things about Google is that they're constantly changing their search algorithm. Many times they go through um, a process of looking at how closely your search terms match to the content of a page and then how much traffic that page will get, but they're also always making changes. For example, in April, Google announced that they were going to, in April, they announced that they were in fact taking aim at fake news sites. This news story is from November when they announced that they were going to work on their algorithm. And last month they actually did change their algorithm to begin to work out fake um, news websites. So they're constantly changing it as well. And students need to know that, um, so a Google search they perform today might be look a little bit different um, months down the road or maybe a year from now. All right, welcome to everybody who's joining in. Ooh. I'm going to um, ask you if you would mute your microphone, especially if it's noisy uh, in the area that you're, that you're in. And we welcome you to today's webcast. I'm talking a little bit at this time about how search works. Um, it can be confusing and difficult to understand how some of the search results um, come up in terms of, of Google. So if I, for example, search digital literacy, you'll see the results come up. And it can be confusing to uh, figure out why um, Microsoft's digital literacy result, for example, comes up above uh, the digital literacy U.S. Um, website, for example. And students may sometimes have difficulty understanding the difference between all of these different um, types of websites, a GOV versus a U.S., um, a com, a dot com, and so on. One thing that's important to note about Google search in terms of basics is that you can use the Omnibox. If you right click anywhere in your um, Omnibox, you can go in and edit search engines. I don't know if you can see me doing this, but I just went in, I right clicked, and if you hit edit search engines, it will give you the opportunity to go in and select default search engine. Google is the default for our domain, but you can switch and use different search engines. And different search engines have different ways that they index sites, and so a good exercise for students in the classroom is to maybe choose one of these different services and see how the results differ. Because if they've only used Google, they may not realize that search results can vary across different engines. Another tip for you to show students is just to bring up a search box. If you hit Control F, it'll bring up the control, uh, the search box on the right side of the page and you can come in and start searching. So here's my search box and I can go in and start um, searching. Another feature of Google search that students um, may not fully take advantage of is the fact that you can do voice searching. If you connect a microphone to the desktop 
or use the built-in microphone on the Chromebook, you can do voice searching. So for example, here I am on my, on my page. And if I hit the microphone, I've got a microphone connected to my desktop and I can start searching. Weather, London. It's 50 degrees and mostly cloudy in London. So you can see um, from that example how voice searching can work if you connect your microphone. Now, if you are working with students who are using the Chromebooks, you have to go into the settings and turn voice searching on. So down at the bottom right of the Chromebook, and I'm not on the Chromebook to show you, but I did snapshot the, the page, go into your settings. Underneath your, um, your settings, look under search and check the box that says enable OK Google to start a voice search. And you can allow students to use voice search um, in their Google searches. Another tip that can help students out is to, of course, talk to them about choosing words that are that are likely to appear on the website. Younger students oftentimes need help with this. You may need to model and demonstrate this for students because um, many times students will simply type in one word and then get stuck if they don't find the result that they're looking for. Um, students in general want to stay stuck at the top of of their web searches in general anyway. And they oftentimes have difficulty figuring out how to um, specify their searches so that they can get better information. Also, keep in mind that spelling and capitalization does not always matter. Um, give this one a try. Try typing um, President uh, Barack Obama's name in, using capitals versus using lowercase. Okay, so here are the results for the first search. And here's the results for lowercase. Um, oftentimes students need to see that before they realize, especially when searching for individuals, it may not make any difference if they use um, lowercase or capitals. There are also quick answers that can be found using Google search and oftentimes students need to know about these. So you can type weather London, just like I did on the voice search. To get the weather for London or any other location that they would type in. If you type the word define in front of any word, You'll get, a def you'll get taken to a definition. So try it out and define phlebotomy using Google search. And you get taken to the definition. You can also grab translations, word origins, and use over time using Google search. All right, I got a question um, in the chat box today about, about today's resources. Let me share that hyperlink one more time. And hopefully, um, if you need an access to today's HyperDoc in a presentation, it's right in there in the chat box. Okay, so definitions, weather. Unit conversions, okay, give this one a try, open up your Google search um, page or open up a fresh Google search and type $50 to, to Euro and watch what happens. And I'll do the same thing. And you see it's already prompting me and here we go. 50 US dollars equals 45.91 Euro. And my chart of exchange rate values over time is, is blocked out, but you can see I can do a lot of different conversions here right within Google search. Um, it doesn't just do currency conversions. You can also do unit conversions, uh, liters to ounces. You can convert time and a lot more than that as well.
you may have uh, noticed that if you type in the name of a sports team, it's going to go ahead and give you the schedule and a lot of facts and other information. as well. So there's sports within Google search and then there's also facts about famous people. So give this one a try. Type in Nikola Tesla and watch what comes up or someone else famous. So we're taken to the search results on uh, Nikola Tesla and then we also get um, a fact box along the right side. Okay, any questions about some of these basic um, search techniques? Any basic search techniques that have worked for you in your class with students? All right, well, I'm going to go on and I'm going to, let's start looking at um, some of the more intermediate techniques. Now, once students get comfortable with basic searching and they um, are getting really good at um, finding good search terms, have them start working with something called search operators. Search operators help you to refine web searches. They really make your web uh, searches more precise. And um, you can use several different techniques depending on the information that you're looking for. And I want to highlight a few of these. For example, you can exclude words from your search. So put a minus sign in front of the word car if you want to search for Jaguars, but you don't want to find the word car. It makes a really big difference when you search that way. So if I say Jaguar, and you'll see the results that come up. I get um, taken to a page about cars and then to Wikipedia. But if I modify that search using a search operator, I get a completely different set of search results. And so now my top hits are about um, wildlife defenders, National Geographic, photos and facts, and so on. So completely different result just by adding the minus sign and telling Google that I, want, I don't want any result that has to do with cars. There are several of these on this page. You can see a long list of them, and I've hyperlinked them so that you can go in. You can also look for exact matches in Google search. So for example, tallest building. And if I put that in quotes, it means that I want an exact match on that search term. And I get tallest buildings and structures. You can also see that you can search for wild cards. So I can search for a wild card by adding the asterisk. And you'll see those, the search results starts coming up. It starts looking and searching for uh, wild cards in terms of uh, hotels, buildings, countries, lakes, deserts. So it's just going to start looking for all the largest things in the world and it'll start pulling up those sites according to the popularity and the hits that those sites get. You can also search for specific sites. So many times students are looking for a specific site, but they have difficulty. Have them put in uh, the word site in their web search. So I'm going to say site whitehouse.gov. And that brings me to all of the um, whitehouse.gov archives and other sites that are associated with uh, whitehouse.gov.
So search operators can be really powerful. You can also put related in front and find related websites. You can get details about a website by putting info All right, so let's run some info about our own um, website, ebrschools.org, and you can see it'll show you a cache. You can find web pages that are similar to, web pages from the site, and also web pages that contain the term. And all of those are made possible through search operators. All right, any questions so far? I'm going to pause here and let you try a few search operators. Right? Once students get familiar with search operators, things like finding a specific site, you'll want to show them reverse image search. And Google does something where you can find um, the place that are the origin of a specific image. To use reverse image search, you want to go to images.google.com. And you'll see that uh, it takes you to a little bit of a different looking Google search page. If I click the camera on the search page, I can paste an image URL or I can even upload an image from, uh, from my computer. So I could choose a file. And so I selected an image from my computer and it's going to tell me where that image came from. So the image that I just uploaded came uh, from a site that's dealing with climate change in the Arctic, so it's an image of the Arctic. And it not only um, found the image on my computer, but it found the site that it came from. You can also drag and drop images from your computer into the Google image search. And so this is a lot of fun um, for students. They'll, they'll enjoy this one as well. Another um, feature that students, uh, intermediate search feature that students may not be aware of is the fact that you can right click on an image and find out where um, the image is, is coming from. So if you're on a website, Let's find a, a website. Here we go. See, I'm trying to get rid of the ads and advertisements. Here we go. You can click on an image, right click, and then search Google for the image as well. So you could do this on any website and get more information about the image. Now, one thing that you can also do is turn on safe search filtering. If you have any concerns about using search in class uh, with students, especially for images, you can turn on safe search. The way to do that is that you want to open up your search settings, and I've given you a link that will take you to your search settings in Google Chrome, and then come to this box and turn on Safe Search. You can even lock Safe Search so that it will exclude um, violent and adult content that um, you don't want students to access. So Safe Search filtering can be turned on. All right, any questions so far about um, some of the intermediate search techniques? All 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about um, filtering search results and also image search. So within um, your Google search, you're also going to notice that you have some commands here across the top of the page on the left side. You can look at all results or images, and you may have used these before, videos, you can search news articles, and then there's also even more. Here are your search settings. Here's that safe search setting I was talking about. If you go to history, it will take you to things that you searched for under your activity. And this is a good one that will um, help students understand a little bit more about their activity on Google. Now when you go to tools, you'll see that you can look at all news or recent news. And um, this will help you filter the results out based upon time. So if you would like students to uh, find articles uh, from a custom range, say, uh, 10 years ago, you could have them do that just by clicking on the calendar. You could also um, specify to students that you want them to find more current information. And so you can do that under the search tools. So I could find only articles that have been posted in the past week or items posted in the past week as well. So all of these are available to you in Google search as well. Once um, students get used to filtering search results, either from the search bar or using, uh, using the tools, you'll want to introduce them to advanced search. So the website for that is google.com advanced underscore search. And there's a link to it on the HyperDoc so that you can get to it pretty quickly. Advanced search works well for uh, older students doing more specific types of research projects, but it's a good thing to show to, to kids once they get um, comfortable with search techniques. Even for middle school students, they can get comfortable with this. So here's advanced search, and you can see you can narrow your results in several different ways. So you can find uh, pages with all of the words, any, so it really takes you into some of those more sophisticated um, search operators. Num none of the words or numbers reigning, uh, ranging from. You can also then narrow results. You can search for different languages, different regions. The last time the information was updated. You can search only one site. For example, limit your results to things like .gov sites, government sites, or organizations or .edu, educational organizations. So give it a try. Type in an advanced search and see what comes up. And you'll see on the HyperDoc, I've got a few suggestions. Um, try to find a PowerPoint about barn owls. So let's see, barn owls, and I'm going to go to file type, look under any format, and let's find a PowerPoint document. And I'll hit advanced search. And yes, there are PowerPoint presentations that are available on the web about barn owls. Or find a PDF containing information about Tiger Stadium or another building that you're familiar with. I can go back in and only um, find items that have been, um, say, in PDF format and last updated in the past month. Okay, and you can see different search results all together when I'm looking for a PDF versus a PowerPoint presentation. So students may not realize that they can use advanced search to pull up specific documents, documents from a specific time period, or even from a specific region. 
There's even an advanced search for images. And I've included the hyperlink in the hyperdoc. This one will search just for images. So um, I can go in, run a search on flowers, and I could search for um, flower images that are larger than 640 by 480 pixels. And I want something square, and I want them to be blue. And here we go. So I've got a very specific um, image search going. So when students are maybe putting presentations together, uh, they can find very specific images. And again, here comes my image search. I can make changes, filter these results even further with more tools or looking at usage rights. It's important also to point these out to students so that they understand um, that some images are not filtered on a Google search. Some of them are labeled so that you can reuse them. Whereas um, other images are labeled so that you can reuse them, you can resize them, you can crop them. as well. Okay, any questions on advanced search? I don't want to move away from advanced search without mentioning Google Scholar because for those of you that might work with high school students, you uh, once they get used to the basic intermediate and some of the advanced search uh, features, they may want to take a look at Google Scholar. Google Scholar has some um, really good features. For example, you can uh, save a library of information that you find on Google Scholar. So if I type in a, a query about barn owls, I'm going to get um, books, articles. I can filter by um, time, also by um, so including citations, patents. You can create an alert, which means that when new articles are posted, uh, you will get an email from Google Scholar. And when you select um, an item in Google Scholar, you can add it to your library. So high school students and um, students in middle school at the upper ranges may want to start to create a library about a topic, especially for a long-term um, project or, or paper that they're writing. You can, you can create your own library, add it to your favorites. And another um, nice feature is that you can also get the citation in a variety of formats within Google Scholar. So you can pull up citations and then save them to different um, resources such as RefWorks, EndNote, and so on. All right, I'm also gonna talk about um, some classroom resources because if you like a lot of these features but you're wondering how will you bring this into your classroom and begin to um, work with students, I want you to know that there's a Google search education page and it's a really good one. There are four different uh, ways that the Google search page can help you bring uh, teaching about digital literacy and Google search and research into your classroom. One is that you can look at lesson plans and activities, power searching tips, Google a day, and also live training. So when you go to the lesson plan page, you'll see that there are full lessons, some at the beginner level, some intermediate, some advanced, and they give you um, all of the tools that you need to take the students through a lesson, for example, on picking the right search terms.
and it includes the links to things like videos, and also slide shows as well. So I just want you to know from this that Google has thought about teachers in the classroom trying to bring in digital literacy and they've created lesson plans to help you begin to teach students um, no matter what age or what their level of exposure to research might be. In the power searching area, you, you'll see that there are some self paced courses that you can take to improve your search skills. One of them is a basic power searching class and then there's also an advanced power searching class. So if you've been wondering about how you can learn more about all of this, a next step for you after this webinar might be to sign into your Google account and then take the power searching course or the advanced power searching course. And it's taken a while to come up, but if it pops up, I'll put it on my screen and show it to you. So there are two courses that where you can earn some credentials from Google um, all about search education. A Google a day is a trivia challenge based on Google search, and this one is just a lot of fun for students. And you can see that uh, every day they post um, a digital literacy or a Google search challenge. And it takes you to a Google slide. And a series of activities to go through to get students thinking about research and the best and most efficient ways to use Google search. So those are the Google a day challenges and the challenge categories vary, culture, geography, history, and science. So you can, you can pull in Google search and do something really fun with students uh, while covering content at the same time. And I've also included the hyperlink to the Google a day game. Um, it's, in, it's in beta, but it's a, a fun game that you can play with students where there's a different question. And there are different questions on a daily basis. And this one is on pop culture, let's see. Which is an anagram of a word referred to several times. And you can see, so that's the Google a day game. And so it's a fun way maybe to get a Google search or research lesson or session started in, your, in the classroom. I also wanna mention that um, Google also features live trainings. So these are webinars that are recorded. They'll take you through things like power searching, how to get past the first five results, believe it or not, how to use Google Scholar, Google Maps, and so on. I want to mention that in Canvas, there are a couple of resources. One is unpacking the LDOE literacy, uh, digital literacy guides. And I've got um, a link there that'll take you to the course. And in the digital literacy guides, you'll see that um, a team of educators for the district put together a set of tools and also activities for all of the digital literacy skill sets and searches included. So research and information gathering. And that is available for K through 12. All right, um, let's see, Ms. Arsenault is on the um, chat box today and she's mentioned that she likes Google a day. Feels like it might make a great bell ringer, especially during a research unit. I agree, I think the Google a day are just really fun. And so it would be fun to post the Google a day maybe up on the whiteboard and then allow the students to use their Chromebooks to try to find the answer to one of those questions. 
and see how quickly they could get the answer to that Google a day. So you could either do the Google a day challenge if you want to plan it or, the, or pull up the Google a day game and just see how quickly they could, uh, they could solve that. The kids love challenges. They love mysteries. They love when you give them problems to solve and see how quickly, how well their, um, their research skills are progressing. I also want to mention that we have a self-paced course in Canvas, and I've got a hyperlink to that as well on digital literacy and searches included. I also want to throw out um, three additional resources shared um, by some fellow Google certified trainers. So if you'd like more information, if you liked um, learning about those search operators, how to put the word site in front of a search or define in front of a search, there are web pages out there that um, will help you um, remember all of that. So definitely share these in the classroom. Here's one on Google search tips and tricks. So this can be a handy one for students and also for fellow teachers and then an advanced Google search hyperdoc. Which will help you create your own uh, custom Google search activities in your classroom. So this is an example task, and then also example evidence for the students to go out and find as they learn more about Google search. All right, any questions? Well, I hope that what you've gotten out of today's webcast are some places that you can go to take some next steps to learn more about Google search on your own and also some things that you can bring into your class and use immediately with students if you're planning a research unit or if you're planning to begin to uh, develop tasks and activities and lessons to build your students' digital literacy skills. If you have any questions at all, feel free to um, email me at kkuyper11 at ebrschools.org. And I want to make sure that I mention that uh, to follow us on the website, ebrschools at ebrschoolsedtech.org. Uh, ebr Join our Google group. I've got a link to the uh, Q&A forum on the EdTech website. Follow us on Twitter at maps underscore EBR, PD underscore EBR. And uh, a new thing that we're doing, we've got an Ed Chat every third Wednesday of the month. And so Join us um, at hashtag EBREdChat, and then also the Facebook group and our mind as well. So I'm going to hang around for a little while. That's it for me. I'm going to hang around, and if you have any questions, feel um, free to uh, type them in the chat box.